Health by Heather Hirsch. I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch and if this is your first time meeting me, I'm the lead physician of the Menopause and Midlife Clinic at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. And I am also a NAMS physician. NAMS is the North American Menopause Society. We are the governing body of all things menopause here in the United States. And in this video, I wanted to do a review about testosterone replacement in postmenopausal women. So that's what we're going to be talking about today and I get a lot of questions on this and so I want to clear up a lot of the misconceptions I get about testosterone replacement. I want to talk about when you should use testosterone replacement and when you should not use testosterone replacement and how is the best way to do this. Now, first and foremost, I want to say, as always, this is not direct medical advice. And so I definitely recommend if you listen to this video and you like it, you know, take this information back to your doctor to discuss with him or her, or better yet, go to menopause.org, search under find a provider. And there you can see if there's a NAMS physician that is close to where you live. All right. So let's talk about what is the role of testosterone postmenopausally. So I have to say, this is the biggest misconception. The biggest use for testosterone replacement postmenopausally is for women who have hypoactive sexual desire disorder or low libido is another way to say it. And to have hypoactive sexual desire disorder, essentially your low libido needs to be troublesome to you as well as distressing to your quality of life. So those are the big things that you need to come up with this diagnosis. So why is this important? Well, Many women notice that libido changes in midlife and at menopause. And you know, the purpose of the sex drive is to reproduce. So once you become menopausal, your ovaries aren't making any estrogen anymore. They've closed down shop. You're probably not going to get pregnant. You may have already had one or two or more children. And so your brain sort of says, I don't need sex to survive. Like I do food, shelter, and water. And so naturally you may think about sex less. Now, some of my patients say, I don't think about sex at all. My husband isn't bothered by it. Maybe he's in the same boat. If I never have sex again, I'm perfectly fine. Our relationship will be fine and therefore it doesn't bother me. So they may have low libido, but they don't necessarily have hypoactive sexual desire disorder because it's not distressing. It doesn't bother them. It's not affecting their quality of life. Many women on the other camp will say, I miss having that libido. I, I really loved that part of my life. I really want to have that back. I, you know, my husband and I would like to be continuing to make those connections. Our children are gone or they're out of the house. This is the time in my life where I want to have that libido back, but I cannot seem to get it. That's definitely a good example, you know, of, 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 of low desire, of low libido. And then a lot of women are in the middle camp. They might say, I love my husband. I find him really attractive. I'm not interested in being with anyone else. But when it comes to sex, you know, I'd rather cuddle or, or smooch or read a book together or take a walk together. But I'd like to be able to have more intercourse. I want my husband to know I love him. I want him to be satisfied. And so it is important to me. And that can also, again, qualify because it's, it's distressing to you. So anytime somebody comes to me, I always want to sort of tease out, you know, some of the environmental changes, the hormonal changes that can change your libido you know, pretty commonly at menopause and midlife. And then of course, I also ask about so many other things. Are you sleeping well? Are you having hot flashes? How are your kids? Are you very anxious? Do you have other medical conditions? What medications are you taking? You know, how is your relationship? Um, because there is so many pieces to libido. It is not really just a one one thing can just completely fix this. So it is useful to think about all the other pieces that make up a sexual life, a sexual function, um, and therefore your libido. All right, so just kind of want to give you that quick overview. If it really looks like, you know, this, this uh, hypothetical patient doesn't really take a lot of medications, is sleeping just fine, you know, um, and it's really just libido, we can talk about using testosterone for enhancing a little bit of that libido. So testosterone's main role postmenopausally is for kind of awakening that uh, libido. It is not 
really indicated for fatigue, for gaining muscle mass, for metabolism, uh, or just, you know, you're postmenopausal, so we should give you a testosterone in your regimen. It's really, really not. Now, data on testosterone use is still very hard to assess. And the reason is, is because testosterone is not FDA approved in the United States. It is, it is just that fact. And when something's not FDA approved, it makes it a little bit harder to study. So NAMS, the North American Menopause Society in 2019 came out with a wonderful summary and recommendation on the use of testosterone in women going by the studies and the data that we currently have. We wish there was more, we wish there was more long-term data, and we hope that we can get there, but getting FDA approval for testosterone for women is going to be a long and expensive and uphill battle. It's a separate video, so just deal with what we got right now. In their position statement about testosterone, and I do tend to agree, the main role is in libido. All right, now again, I did a whole video on pellet injections, and I will either link that below, but when pe women get pellet injections, they typically get very high doses of testosterone and you know, the whole uh, reason I did that video was to discuss some uh, of those major harms that can come from um, pellet injections of testosterone. So again, the main role is for a boost in a woman's libido. Now, the North American Menopause Society, and I also agree, the best way to use t testosterone after you've teased out the reason for its use and you've teased out some of the other libido or relationship issues and you made sure the woman is sleeping well, is feeling well, um, etc., um, is to uh, uh, is to use a physiologic dose of testosterone. All right, so I'll say that again: a physiologic dose of testosterone. Physiologically, women only need a very small dose of testosterone, and so we recommend those of us in the North American Menopause Society recommend a very low dose of topical testosterone. Okay, so again actually in the North American Menopause Society uh, really stands against the use of injections or pellet injections because of the risk of supertherapeutic doses of testosterone. I'll come to that in a minute. So how do I typically prescribe testosterone? Well, again, I typically prescribe a transdermal testosterone that a woman can put uh, somewhere in meaty, and maybe an arm, maybe a thigh, and this is a very, very small dose. So one way I do this is I take a male dose of testosterone or a, a prescription that one might write for a man and have my female patients take one tenth of the dose. And some of my patients will even start lower than that because again, I'm very careful that I don't want to overdose my patients on testosterone. And they apply it topically. And again, I see them in six weeks and I wanna see if there's an, an improvement in a patient's libido. If not, well, maybe the dose is too low and maybe she can try a smidge more. And after that, you know, still if not, then there is no role for continuing testosterone replacement. It might mean that there's something else. Maybe it is a relationship issue. Maybe it's the dog sleeping in your bed. Maybe there's college kids home. It might mean that there's something else. So let's talk about the caveats of when I prescribe top, of topical testosterone. So I already recommend, I already stated, I use a very low dose of topical or transdermal testosterone. I see my patients in six weeks and I always check their testosterone levels before and after. And you can get very fancy about which levels you check, but essentially I just wanna make sure, one, they're not high to begin with, because then there's absolutely no reason to use testosterone. It's not a testosterone problem. Typically, postmenopausally, they're not, but you know, again, it's always a good idea to have those checked at baseline. And then when I have my patients come back in six weeks, I make sure they're still not too elevated. In fact, most of my patients' testosterone levels go from uber low to still pretty mild to moderately low and under that threshold for what's considered normal in women because again, you just do not need very high doses of testosterone. 
Now caveat, if I have a much younger female, if you have early menopause, which is menopause before age 40, or, or 45 is early menopause, or if you have premature menopause, which is menopause before age 40, um, then sometimes you need a little bit more testosterone just because it's an important hormone to have, and you might need just a little bit more than if you were, you know, naturally menopausal. So those can those are some little nuances into how much testosterone replacement a woman really does need so again what are the dangers of too much testosterone so again i mentioned this in the video i did on why not to use pellet injections but here is the list again too high testosterone or super therapeutic testosterone levels can cause several things one permanent deepening of your voice and this can be irreversible so this is extremely important. You can have permanent enlargement of the clitoris, which is called clitoromegaly. That is a scientific term. I doubt this is a side effect that you want. People can also get acne from too much testosterone, and this acne can be so bad that it causes scarring, scarring that takes months or years to go away, or scarring that can be permanent. And you can also have uh, facial hair, or for many women, the first thing they'll see is losing their hair or balding. Um, that is extremely distressing, and I talked about that as well in my video um, about hair thinning. So testosterone definitely can cause some side effects when it is way too high. The reason, again, not to use pellet injections is because because once that dose is injected, you are stuck with it for three months, whereas a topical, very uber low dose, you know, anytime my patient sees even a little bit of a pimple or a sign that their testosterone is too high, they know to not apply their testosterone for a couple of days so that they can kind of dilute out those levels because we never want them to go too high. So let's summarize, because I know that I talk a lot and I know that I can talk fast. And I don't script these videos, I probably should, but a lot of it just comes from here. So why use testosterone postmenopausally? It is really important, primarily it is used for low libido. In women to whom their low libido is distressing and it is affecting their quality of life. It's important as a physician to, and as for your physician to rule out other things that could be affecting your libido, such as other medications or other things in your life or your relationship that are not related to hormones. The best way to use it and the only way you really should use it is to use a topical, very low dose of physiologic doses for women because testosterone is not FDA approved. Most NAMS physicians will either compound it again because it's not FDA approved, so they have to do that, or use um, something like androgel, which is typically prescribed for men and have women use a 10th to a 12th of the dose. You should have your testosterone levels checked before you start to make sure that they're not high at the onset of your treatment and you should have them checked again in about six weeks to make sure that they are not too high. If testosterone is not helping your libido, don't use it. It's not going to help. It's not, it's not indicated for fatigue, for muscle mass, for memory, or just men, being menopausal in general. It's just not recommended. The North American Menopause Society and I stand behind that statement. You want to make sure levels do not get too high. You do not want permanent deepening of your voice, permanent enlargement of the clitoris, or balding or scarring from acne. And so major reasons why you do not want the, the testosterone level to get too high. And that's really the, the gist on when, why, and how to use testosterone in women postmenopausally. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give this a thumbs up. That lets me know and that lets YouTube know that you like this type of content. You wanna see more from me. And I have so many things to do. So if I feel like you love this content, I definitely promise to make room in my schedule to make more for you. Always, you're also welcome to check out my menopause course, which is linked down below, my menopause ebook, How to Talk to Your Doctor About Menopause. They're all great resources because it is my mission and my passion to fill the gap in knowledge and care in women's health. Thank you guys so much. I hope to see you again soon.